Hi everyone, it's Shedage again, and today we'll be solving problem number 15. Here we have the pr a problem. In this problem, we're going to be finding the, uh, the amount of paths from the top left to the bottom right of a lattice. So what we need to do is, this is m more a math problem than a programming problem. You could probably even do this with a calculator, but with Scholar's features, it's much more interesting using uh, a computer programming language. So let's first work out the math. So let's try this with a sample case. So we have a two by two grid. So w we know that we're going to move right twice and down twice. And the only thing that changes is the order that we do it in. So first we can come up with a, a string, right, right, down, down. And now we need to figure out how many ways are there to permute this. So we have four factorial because there are four options for the first, th uh, three options for the, se uh, for the second, two options for the third, and one option for the last. But we ha encounter a problem when we do four factorial. By doing four factorial, we are implying that each of these has a number attached to it that, uh, that separates it from another one with the same thing. So in with four factorial, R1, R2 is different than R2, R1. And we don't want this. So uh, what we have to do is we need to find the amount of weight is to permute the R's and the amount of ways to permute the D's. So for each of them, since we have two of each, we are going to have two factorial times two factorial. And now what we need to do is uh, we're going to uh, equate this. So we have four times three times two divided by two times two. And well, we, we can cancel these out and we get three times two, which is six, which if we count these one, two, three, four, five, six, that's the right amount. So how are you going to do this for a 20 by 20 grid? Well, we're going to use the same trick. So you're going to have 20 R's and 20 D's. So we're going to have first 20 factorial for the R's times 20 factorial for the D's. And actually, this is wrong because that would have been the denominator. I forgot to calculate the numerator. What we need for the numerator is we're going to have a total of 40 characters, 20 R's and 20 D's. So we actually need to do 40 factorial. And then our denominator is 20 factorial for each of them, since that's the, ways, uh, that's the amount of ways to permute 20 R's and 20 D's. And this is what we're going to calculate. So let's go here. Uh, that's nice. I have it right here. So first, what we need to create a method factorial. So def factorial, and this is going to take a uh, number of type int, and it's going to have to return big int. The reason why is n uh, numbers like 40 factorial tend to be pretty large, so we're going to need a, a big int to store them. And what we're going to have is we're going to First, uh, we're going to create our range, which is what numbers we're multiplying together. So we're going to start with begint 1, 2, our number. And uh, what happens here is since this is a begint, number will automatically be converted to a begint as well. So now we can just do product. And that's our factorial method. Now let's, uh, go, uh, uh, let's solve the problem. So we're going to have println, and we're going to have factorial of 40 divided by factorial of 20 times factorial of 20. OK. Let me save and run. And you get our answer. So I looked at this problem, um, program and I thought, wouldn't it be cool if you could uh, change this factorial 40 to 40 exclamation mark? And thanks to Scala's implicit conversions, this is possible. We're actually going to be using a new feature of Scala, which is Im Im implicit classes. So first I'm going to have an, I'm going to make a new implicit class. And we'll call this factorial int since that's what it adds, factorial int. 
And what it needs to do is, uh, what the implicit class does is, you create a class with the methods that come from the implicit conversions, and it will automatically generate the implicit conversions for you. So what we're going to be converting from is a val num of type int, and we're going to make this any val. So the reason why we're extending any val is basically, for example, int is an any val because it's a primitive type. And what happens is if you didn't extend any, any val, you would have a class factorial int which stores a number. And this tends to get a little slow because you have to get the first get the factorial int, then open it up and get the number. Uh, with any val, you directly get the number itself. So it's a little faster. It won't make much of a difference in this problem, but it's a good idea to use, especially when we're using implicit classes. And now we're going to have a method def factorial, and this is going to be of type big int. And what this is going to equal to is we're going to have this. So let me apple x this out. Why don't you like this? Yep, this works. Okay, and now what we have to do here is, and uh, I have to keep this in parentheses since uh, uh, fa uh, exclamation mark can be used with numbers, um, and it gets confused when you're doing exclamation times. So I have to put this in parentheses. So 40 factorial divided by 20 factorial times 20 factorial. So this is like really cool. And in fact, it shows that we're using an input set conversion, which does 42 factorial into 40, 20 to factorial into 20, and the same thing. So now that we can run. And you get our same answer. So about this um, exclamation mark, I'm a bit iffy about using this all the time since you have to put parentheses around it and this can get a little messy, but it's still a really cool feature of Scala which I wanted to show you to you guys. So that's our solution for problem number 15 and I'll see you next time when we solve problem number 16. I'll see you there. Bye!